Welcome to episode 29 in this chess puzzle adventure series starring Bobby Fisherman, Average Joe, and Peter Potzer. Previously, two episodes back, Peter Potzer and Average Joe had escaped from Potzer Prison after successfully defeating Officer Pawnpusher in a game of chess. They decided that they would continue towards the Dragon's Lair to try to retrieve the Dragon's Tear Gemstone to give to the chef. But to do that, they first needed to cross over Fire Mountain. And not long after they began their journey through Fire Mountain, they ran into a fire giant. The giant said, stop right there. You're not allowed to cross this mountain unless you can first solve this puzzle. Peter and Joe looked at each other and Peter said, okay, I'll give it a shot. The giant said, I don't think so because you volunteered. I'm going to force your friend to solve the puzzle. And he looked at Average Joe. He said, if your friend can't solve it correctly, I'll be sending you both to the giant's playground to meet my brother. Average Joe and Peter Potzer were a bit concerned because if you remember, Average Joe's rating was only 1,400. He had not eaten any of the magic berries. And with that, the giant presented Average Joe the following puzzle. Okay, here's the position that he presented to Average Joe. It's white to play and save the game, somehow not lose. White's pawn is going forward in this direction, but Black's pawn is going down the board in this direction. Before I say anything else, what do you think White should play to draw this game? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the only move here for White is the stunning move, Rook to A5. And I say stunning move because if you look at Black's pawn, it can simply capture the Rook. So you're giving up your Rook for free. Now, why are we doing that? Well, the problem is this can't be stopped otherwise. So for example, if you get a queen, black gets a queen and you get checkmated. If you try to block, the game is over. Also, if you tried to block it with your rook like this, well then of course the pawn can simply take you, right? And you're also going to be getting checkmated the next move. This is simply checkmate. Notice how the knights are controlling all of these squares so the king can't leave. And then kind of the only other try that you could have said would be moving your bishop, trying to stop it like this, but then the knight actually just captures the rook. And yes, you can get the queen, but black has this follow-up move, knight to c7, check, which forks you. And after you go here, they take your queen. Yes, you can take one of the knights. Doesn't really matter which one you choose. And still black is going to win. This pawn is going to be pushing down the board along with the help from the knight and the king, and it's just too much for white to, to handle. So for example, maybe you go here and try to stop the knight. B4, maybe you take the knight. B3, the king is going to loop around, probably like this is the easiest, and your king is just not in time to stop these pawns. Okay, so it was a good idea, but it doesn't quite work. So the only way is to play rook to a5. But some of you might be thinking, but after we lose our rook, we're still in the same problem, right? Well, here's where it starts to get interesting. So now it's white to play. What do you think the move is here? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is a8 getting the queen. So there's really two options that you may have considered here, probably getting the queen or probably now playing bishop to f6. The problem with bishop to f6 now is black will simply take your pawn. And yes, you can, you know, capture a knight, but let's just say knight to b5 check. Knight to c3 blocks the bishop off, and there's just too many pawns and knights and everything, and you can't stop the queen. Black's just going to get a queen next move. So it doesn't quite work. Okay, so you have to get the queen, and then, of course, black is also going to get a queen. And now it's white to play. Still, to save the game, what should white play next? If you had a chance to look at that, the move is queen to c6. Check to the king, and the reason you're going here is you're setting up a follow-up move, which is stunning. So black is trying to avoid the checks. So they don't really want to like go somewhere like this and allow you, you know, all of these options to keep putting them in check. So black plays king to b4. And if you look carefully, there's not really any good checks. If you go here or here or here, the knights are covering all of those squares. You would just lose your queen. Same thing here, same thing here. Everything is covered. Here, also covered and let's see that I could yeah everything is covered so there's no checks really so what do you play as white to not lose well if you had a chance to look at that let me explain to you what average joe thought the solution was he thought the move 
was queen to c3 check, and he thought he had found a very nice idea. And his idea was that regardless of how black captures the queen, there was going to be a skewer. So for example, if the king takes the queen, you have a skewer here, which is going to win the queen. That's one example. Also, if the queen takes, you have a skewer over here, which is going to win the queen. And by the way, two knights against a king cannot force a checkmate. So uh, this would be a, a theoretical draw, okay? And in the other line that I just showed you, same thing. If the king takes, this is what Average Joe was thinking. He would be able to eventually take this pawn, even if he had to sacrifice his bishop to do so. And then again, the two knights would not be able to checkmate. But unfortunately for Average Joe, there was a mistake in his calculations. See if you can find the mistake, and then we'll talk about what the actual correct solution was. Well, if you had a chance to do that, Average Joe actually got the first move correct. Queen to c3 was the drawing move, but his follow-up was not correct. So first things first, if the queen takes, then this is absolutely right. You go here, you take this, and the two knights cannot checkmate, the game is a draw. That's fine. The problem, and this is what Average Joe messed up, was on king takes. In this scenario, you can't go here and win the game because black would simply go king to b3, and when you take this, the pawn is pushing, and you actually can't force a trade for it. So for example, let's say you try to hunt it down. The pawn's going to push. And now what are you going to do? Yeah, you can move your bishop somewhere. That's a fork, so you don't want to go there. Let's just say you choose a better square. But again, the knight's coming in, and after the king moves, look at this. You can block off the bishop, and there's no way to stop the pawn from becoming a queen. You're just too slow. You can't actually get around to sacrificing. Okay, That's the problem that Average Joe missed. So what did he need to play from this position if queen to c3 was the correct move? White to play and save the game, what's the move? You got a chance to look at that. It's the amazing bishop takes a5 check. And why are we doing this? Because of course if the queen takes, we're happy. This is a draw. We already talked about that. But if the king moves anywhere, anywhere, the game is a stalemate. Stalemate because we can't move our king because look at the knights. This knight is stopping these two squares. This knight is stopping these two squares. Okay, so we have to move our bishop, but wait a second. We can't move our bishop because it's pinned. It's an incredible stalemate trap. So bishop takes a5 was the key move, and that is how you save the position. Congratulations if you found that. Unfortunately for Peter Potter and Average Joe, since Average Joe chose the wrong move, the giant said, ha ha, you will not be crossing my mountain you are going to visit my brother at the Giants playground. And with that, he stuffed both Peter Potter and Average Joe into a giant barrel, rolled them down the mountain in the direction of the Giants playground. And that's where we'll pick up our story next time. Thanks for watching and happy adventures on the chessboard.